Hi friends, welcome to JQ command tutorials and this is Narendra instructor for this course. First let me go with introduction to JQ command or simply what is JQ command. See JQ is a command line utility to parse JSON data. So first of all JQ is like any another command which is there on your any operating system like date command, awk command, set command, grep command. And this JQ command is used to parse JSON data. So here what is mean by parse JSON data or parsing JSON data. So it is nothing but reading and writing JSON data. See here there are different ways to parse JSON data or to read and write JSON data and that is based on language. Suppose if you go with Python, there is a module called JSON to read and write JSON data or simply to parse JSON data. And if you go with the shell scripting, there is a command called JQ to read and write JSON data or simply to parse JSON data. Of course, in shell scripting, we are also having set and awk commands to parse JSON data, but compared to those, JQ is powerful tool to parse JSON data. That's fine. But why we need to parse JSON data with JQ command? So before explaining about this concept, let me go with one simple example that is a shell script. See, this is a simple shell script just to find the file system usage on remote server. So here, this is our remote server and we are using username and password as this to connect with this remote server. And here we are executing df-h command on this remote server to find the file system usage. And we are executing this command on remote server with the help of SSH. And we are providing the required password for this command with the help of SSH pass. That's fine. Now let me run that shell script and see the result. Yes, we are getting file system usage on remote server. That's fine. But if you observe your shell script, here we are hard coding username and password. That is not a good practice in your real time. Then what we can do? There are different ways to externalize your username and password in real time. So I am going to select one of the way that is with the help of REST APIs. So here I designed one simple REST API. Now first let me run that REST API. Now let me run this REST API. See this REST API is developed with Python. So we are running that script with Python. And this REST API base URL this one. Now let me execute one of the endpoint from this REST API using cull command and see the result. See here we are getting the output or response for this REST API as a JSON data. And if you observe here, somewhere you have your remote server credentials, that is username and password. Now from this response, I need this password and this username. That means you have to read your required information from this JSON data. That is nothing but parsing JSON data. So that parsing, we are doing it with JQ command. So for time being, let me go with the JQ commands. Later, you will learn how to read that data using JQ command. So here, under secrets key, you have remote server credentials key. There you have username and password. So now, using this REST API, I modified our existing shell script. Now let me go with that modified shell script. So here, we are not hard coding any username and password in your shell script. So just simply we are executing REST API and we are parsing or reading the required information from this response of this REST API with the help of JQ command. So if you don't want to display your username and password even in the output, simply just comment this. But for time being, just to see whether we are able to get our exact required username and password, I'm enabling these two lines. Now let me open new terminal and run this shell script.
yes you are getting your required information file system uses without hard coding username and password in your shell script that's it so that is the uses of jq command in your real time so finally why we need to parse json data simply to read or write our required data from the json data see there are different places where you are going to get json data see almost all rest apis are giving response as json data kubernetes commands output also we can get as json data even if you go with aws cli commands yes we can get output optionally as json data let me show you one of the command from aws cli aws iam list users see here you are getting output as a json data now just from this response i want to list only user names which are there in this json data then yes you can use jq command for that see here i am doing in this way see you are getting only user names from your json data so likewise you can use your jq command so not only these commands nowadays almost all devops tools are trying to give their response as json data so that's why jq command is more useful in our devops technology that's fine now let me go with how to install jq command see basically we can use jq command in almost all operating systems but the efficient way of using jq command is in our shell scripts anyway let me give the commands to install jq command on your centos or rhel so first you just update your m and then simply use m install jq if you are working with ubuntu then simply update your apt get and then install using apt get install jq so if you are using mac then simply update your brew and then install your jq command with the brew like brew install jq that's it thank you